Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. That I'm a weak servant, Ya Rabbi, an abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah we are still in existence that Allah rahmah and mercy inshaAllah to be upon us all and to forgive us our wrongdoings. And alhamdulillah from the teaching of awliyaullah, from Atiullah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum that the reality of our Qibla and the reality of our Salah, the reality of our Marifah because we were talking earlier about dunya zahiri people. That's why when you listen to these Nat Kalam and the one that we posted on the Nuh and Dr. Iqbal, Alam al Iqbal and then Bulay Shah of the Salah Siddhi these awliyaullah when they talked about the Nuh, the pursuit of the Nuh and everything else was so insignificant. Talking about these haqqaiqs are so amazing and immense, this world of light that people whom are focusing on this mulk and the world of form as if they're practicing some other religion and they're lost in a very external understanding, external pursuit and trivial. It seems almost kindergartenish compared to the majestic might of Allah what He has in store for His servants. Requires a humility, requires all of the adab and training which tariqah adab is lost. Tariqah adab is not understood anymore, it's a lost art. All this teaching is for us to learn and apply it in our own lives. When everything we're teaching about La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah teaches you the akhlaq and character that the humility of Sayyidina Muhammad is to come and teach about La ilaha illallah and bring the significance of La ilaha illallah and not teach about Muhammadun Rasulullah If you don't get that you're missing the whole tariqah. So when they would go to Shaykh Nazim and ask Shaykh Nazim, who's your shaykh? Who's the shaykh of the tariqah? He said, of course Shaykh Abdullah Faiz is Dagestani. <coughs> So inheriting same because if you go to Muhammadun Rasulullah he doesn't talk about Muhammadun Rasulullah he talks about La ilaha illallah. So don't underestimate the station of the shaykh who's teaching you and the ability within two seconds to lift you into Divine Presence. Because they come and talk humble to you, then you lost your mind thinking, oh this one, this, this one, I'll go to this, I'll go here, I'll go there. Then you become like these other madhab people, Wahhabis, they think that they're going to go to Allah and Allah going to dress them and give them all these maqams. When they're teaching them, what are you talking about? Allah is going to direct you to Muhammadun Rasulullah If He didn't want to give you that reality He wouldn't have brought it and then you would have been Ahli la illallah. So this whole teaching was to teach the student this reality. So when they ask and they hear and they, they hear the, the humble way in which these shaykhs talk because it's not from your culture that way. When they sit in your cultured events 
the alama so and so, haji so and so, mufti so and so, the highest knowers of this and this so and so. What are all these titles? They teach them in school that when you're in a group of these shaykhs and they want to talk about the next alam next to him, they call him the highest names, biggest names. The next one turns around and says to him, you are the highest one, you're the biggest one. And we sat with the sultan of saints and he never mentioned anyone, he never praised anyone in their presence and he said he's just the servant of Allah and the servant of the nation. And if for a moment you thought he was no one, you lost the tariqah. If you're looking for people who call themselves someone, you'll end up in the wrong hands. So tariqah comes and teaches, find the one whom is competing in their humility, that they are continuously effacing themselves and telling people they're nothing and that they're weak, they're poor, they're faqir in Allah's way because they're not talking to you but they're talking to the shaykhs that are facing them giving them a fayas. That in their association they are absolutely nothing. That looking to them they say we are nothing, we're nothing, we're nothing. That you shine your light, reflect through me and that reflection to go out to people. But unfortunately the audience is hearing, so oh, he said he's nothing so I'll, let me post pictures of the other one, this my shaykh. Then you lost the whole point. If not for this one teaching you, lifting you, raising you and presenting you to the presence of those shaykhs, you can't even get to the outside door of that reality. But through them and their wasila, they take you to the inner chamber of what they have achieved. And that inner chamber into the inner chamber what they call the lube, the, the fruit and the essence of the fruit of the… of like a nut. You get the maqs inside this, the, is the, where the oil, the, the reality of it is, not the outer shell you're stuck on. So with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad what do you get to? The realities and haqqaiqs of Allah Allah. So same reality, same teaching is reflecting. When he's saying his shaykhs are great, that he can take you into that heart and into that presence, dress you from its reality, bless you from it and that their knowledge is a sign, not the book reading, the knowledge that their heart is like a book flowing for you, like a kawthar. Every knowledge that they are giving, these are the qalams of Sayyidina Muhammad by virtue of their knowledge they change your destiny. That's how much power Allah gave to their soul. Your destiny was coming to work at Burger King and you knew nothing more than a hamburger and a fries. As soon as you sat with them they taught you two kalam and that changed the destiny of your soul. And imagine what their soul grabs you and takes you every night into whose presence. That's why you don't have to keep asking them every five minutes, make a du'a for me, make a du'a for me. This is from your nafs and your ego. Their soul knows exactly what to do with you. It's not waiting for you to ask them what to do. Their soul grabs and moves exactly the way that Sayyidina Muhammad wants it to move. So many things are happening behind the scenes and they don't have to talk about it, they don't have to show it, they don't have to show anything of themselves. They have to compete in this filthy world notion of nothingness. The one whom achieves the most nothingness is being given a, a nuqt. He goes negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. He's becoming more powerful in Allah's presence. So Mawlana Shaykh said, out of 124,000 awliya, I'm the negative 000124,000th one. Meaning what? That the minute Allah turns me on, I have the power of 124,000 awliya, not one. I competed and I trained in my nothingness but when Allah flipped the switch He takes this nuqt and flips it on that side. 
So means dunya you compete to be in the negative column, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Allah helps you by being nothing by sending people to insult you, betray you, disgrace you. So then you're going backward, the nukht is coming, nukht is coming, nukht is coming. But Mawlana Shaykh was teaching, but when Allah flipped the switch, this nukht flips on this side and all 124,000 awliyaullah, He carries all their power. And one, one wali, if given permission, can flip the whole dunya upside down. It's not something big for them. If they see their soul, they see their soul holding this art, holding this earth. But this dunya is the abode of being nothing. But that's why they're teaching these realities. Don't think for a second that because Sayyidina Muhammad didn't say it, where's the hadith the Prophet said this, where's the hadith the Prophet said this, it wasn't about that. And it is hidden within his holy hadith. Those whom only translate hadith, they take from Urdu, speak Arabic and say it, or from Arabic to Arabic and say it, but they yet don't know a single word of what that hadith is describing because it has to come live from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad The hadiths are like a footnote, as soon as they recite those few words of the hadith, it's like an index that comes from the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to transmit the live talk, the talk that's relevant to right now on what Sayyidina Muhammad wants for the nation in that region, in that area for that wali and for whom has been partitioned to him on the day of promises. When Allah partitioned the souls and said, this soul, this soul, this soul, this soul, this will be your wakil. And this one will be responsible for you in our Divinely Presence. And the soul said, Bala, yes we agree Ya Rabbi. And our life was to find them. And as a result of finding them, they hold our file. They have the file for our reality, our destination and what is required of our spiritual pursuit. None of which will be shown and all of it is by the heart. If you should leave, you lose that reality and your nafs will take you in many directions until the beating of dunya is good enough and you may come back. And when you come back then it's even harder to struggle into that reality. So it means this whole teaching is very reflective. Whatever they're teaching, if you're clever, observe, absorb it and understand how you're going to use it for your spiritual connection and your relationship with the shaykh. The knowledges that are flowing from them should give you a symbol of the reality that these Muhammadan haqqaiqs are like a fountain coming directly from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad They are not abundant upon the earth. Don't think there are streams flowing everywhere because that would be cheapening that reality. They're few and far between and those are kawthari streams that flow one drop of its reality, if you were to drink from its reality, the drinking in this reality is to hear because your soul drinks it, not your mouth. When they talk about drinking from a reality is your soul takes a knowledge and drinks it, asks Allah to go into it and then begins to bathe within the ocean of that haqqaiq and doesn't stop until the next talk and is going. And that has still nothing to do with how the shaykh is taking the soul and presenting them and associations with the souls that are never, never over. The body may stop and say, good night, there's no time for the soul. The association of the soul is just beginning. They're continuously under a, a dars and a teaching continuously under a, te a, te a teaching and a raising. 
So many things happening behind the scenes. But for tonight we wanted to talk about the reality of these three qiblas, that the dunya people they're fixated on the body and the body qibla is the holy Kaaba. So you direct the body to the direction of the Kaaba and to the best of your ability it's not something that you're firing at where you think it's two degrees this way, three degrees that way because that would be nice and then at the end of the salah you can say, oh, sorry everybody we have to repeat it. Say, why? Because we missed. Right? When you go to for namaz they move your carpet, shake your qiblas this way, two, two degrees this way. And then at the end we can say, oh sorry we missed because we were shooting for our Lord and it, it fired the wrong way. So that in itself is, is becoming crazy now. But to put into perspective what's happening is you make the direction of your salah to the Holy Kaaba. I'm hearing echoes. That body qibla is the direction in which you face your body. That's your Islam, that's the tarbiyah of your Islam. This is the washing of your Islam. When you wash, you're not washing your heart. You're washing your body, your body is a donkey, your body is going back into the grave, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Those whom fixate on their body, it's for them they're looking, Allah's looking, the Divinely Presence looking, say, look this guy how much he likes his donkey, washing it, washing it, cleaning it, cleaning it. I see this on the internet, they're taking the animal, they, they scrub between their dirty feet and scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. So, excuse me, this is a, an animal. How much were you planning on cleaning this feet of this, this donkey and were you planning on eating off of it? It's an animal, the bodies are different. The body is the animalistic form, it's the car, the vehicle in which Allah sent you into this dunya, wash it. Sahabi used who want to be the salaf, which is ridiculous statement that they think they're even close to being salaf. They used a wudu with a cup less than this. How much can you wash your hands, face and feet with a cup of water less than this? Was it about the water then? No, it was symbolic and they were in a desert filled with dust. They would have, you could have become OCD because you would have so much dust on you and say that this cup is not going to work, I'm going to fill it ten times. So they're giving all these isharats to us, we washed, it was symbolic. And this was the level of our Islam, so don't come overly filthy to your salah, wash this vehicle, wash this physicality to the best of your ability. But Prophet brought them. Qiblatul Iman from Atiya Rasul. This is the Atiyullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum, Ulul Amr on this maqam and this understanding is the maqam of Islam. From Atiyullah, that when their belief is raised into obedience towards Sayyidina Muhammad what then Prophet described, your faith is to love me more than you love yourself. Because yourself was the Islam, your body, thinking you're going to perfect all your body, you're going to wash the body, you're going to discipline the body. Later you realize the body should be clean, put in its perspective. Don't emphasize what the body desires and body wants and, and body relationships and obsess over these things. People are obsessing over their money, their car, their homes, their possessions, these are all body. The belief was to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves. This became now the heart. So now I understood my body has to be basic clean, be disciplined, not obsessed over my body. The real obsession really begins now 
is in the qalb in which the baytullah, Allah is now giving us the secret, I'm not on heaven nor on earth. Meaning what? The qibla of reality Allah is now describing for us. I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth. He's giving a secret of the qibla. You disciplined your body, it's locked. You clean the body, it's locked. Now it's under tarbiyah like a trained horse, like a stallion now. But then Allah is giving a sharat, but I'm not in heaven and I'm not on earth, I'm on the heart of my believer. The one whom was humble and only told you about La ilaha illallah. But others came to tell you it's actually the reality is reflecting to Muhammadun Rasulullah That is the believer for Allah and then Prophet came to Sahabi and began to teach, your faith is to love me more than you love yourself. Means now their heart became the house of Allah in which it manifests the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So when they stand for salah they enter into the real Kaaba. The real Kaaba is their qalb and their qalb is filled with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Many of these awliyaullah have seen where Allah did a transplant on them and changed their heart and their heart is written, Rasul Allah. As Sayyidina Jibreel appeared to Prophet open the heart and wash the heart. They've also been given a washing in which their heart opened and written onto their heart, Muhammadun Rasul Allah. And these are ahbab in which their entire being is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they enter into that Kaaba. So as soon as the namaz begins they enter into the qibla of their faith. They want to be in the holy hadith, you will be with whom you love. They establish that their love and their most superior Exalted love is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So immediately their soul is in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And they pray with their soul in their heart. So they're doing all the moves that you're doing but in a reality they're inside their heart and the qibla of their heart is Filled with the reality and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and they are accompanying Prophet where Prophet is always the Imam. And that salah is becoming so much more real. And that's why in the words of your salah you say, As salaamu alaykum but yet you see nothing. But in this maqam al-Iman when they enter into their heart they are praying with Sayyidina Muhammad and when they say, Salaamu Alaika Yuhan Nabi, Prophet is in front and they are giving their salams to Sayyidina Muhammad Wa Ibadullahi Salihin, which are Ashab and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahlul Bayt and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all these awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard are in front of them. This is their qibla. Then Prophet taught, oh, we're going higher. We want to go to Maqamul Ihsan in which all your ibadah is if you see Allah And Allah is describing that, I'm not in heaven and I'm not on earth but if you're looking for me, I'm in the heart of my believer. So when the Qiblat al-Imam becomes so strong, the love becomes so strong that their light is re-entering back into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Not just their light is emanating all around Prophet soul, their light is entering back into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Manzul al-Qur'an in which that location of the qalb, the relocation of the qalb where the qul to the bah. And from that ba, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all knowledges of Holy Qur'an are emanating like a fountain, they pray there. With their soul praying at that fountain, visualize your dunya 
like a fountain that always flowing upon their soul. They're praying at the foot of Niagara Falls. So if you imagine one crazy person sitting at Niagara Falls, with that fountain and Niagara Falls will obliterate you. That water is so pressure is so heavy. This it enlightens them, shower, shower, showering all these lights and realities upon their soul. And that's the secret of that bath, that's the secret of that qalb. That right there in that heart of Sayyidina Muhammad called the qalb where Allah's call, Qafur al-Qur'an and Majeed coming to the lisan. This is a lisan through his qalb, the tongue is actually here. Not here, no physical anymore. The tongue of realities is what the heart speaks. So it means that they're in this place of the qul where Allah is a might that nobody can contain and it comes peaceful. Qul ya nar, kuni bardan wa salaman, qul ya nar, qul Qul, this nar of Allah the fire of Allah is entering into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And Prophet makes it to be cool and peaceful and now all creation will begin to manifest. That Ba'ab become the doorway to all realities of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and every manifestation is coming because the fire and the heat of Allah is a might. It's the coolness of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result becomes peaceful, becomes a creation, becomes the flowing lights of all realities. At that Allah teaching, pray as if you see me, means Allah then takes the soul into an ascension into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad where they're entering into that reality, from that reality their salah in which they witness what Allah want them to witness. Like providing a mirror, a window and a glass to a reality in which they never become one with it but they become a visualize of it. They don't have wahdat al-wujood where they become one with Allah astaghfirullah. But they granted shuhood, wahdat al shuhood. That from the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad their soul is witnessing. And to each awliya, whatever Allah want to grant of its darajat. So it means then they have a qibla of this haqqaiqs of Maqam al Ihsan. And yet people are still coming and moving the carpet like this. And like this, and like this. And then arguing about the moon and forgetting about the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Then we know why difficulty comes upon the earth. Difficulty comes to bring people back to their reality. That you got distracted by the pursuit of your money, your fortune and your fame. The pursuit of everything that dunya was trying to pursue us. And we became zahiri, we became that we want to build a masjid for Allah because shaitan fools you with noble deeds, not bad deeds, not for a believer. He doesn't tell him, come on let's open up something bad. But say, why don't you do this noble deed and you become so external in its pursuit, so preoccupied with its authority and its power. And then you forgot this station of faith and iman that we were supposed to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than we loved ourselves. And we were supposed to understand this world of light and enter into this world of light to be dressed by this world of light. And that our Imam, our Sultan, our King is waiting for us in, in Medina to Munawwara. And that everything is happening by His command, by Allah's command to His holy soul. And every sharat has been given to the nation and this nation not left unattended. We pray that Allah open more and more understanding from this ocean of malakut and that we operate more from the world of light and understand 
leave the external and graduate to the maqam al-iman inshaAllah from maqam al-iman to maqam al-ihsan inshaAllah. With the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad the barakat of awliyaullah flowing through this earth to uplift us from difficulty. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa wa siri suri sayyidi fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.